In two weeks, special counsel Robert Mueller is scheduled to testify in back-to-back -back House hearings about Russia's election interference in 2016 and potential obstruction by President Trump. Meanwhile, Paul Manafort, who is charged in connection with Mueller's investigation, has pleaded not guilty to criminal charges in New York State. Russian oligarch Oleg Deripaska is a former business associate of Paul Manafort. and an exclusive interview with Hill TV's John Solomon, Deripaska talked about his relationship with Manafort and what role it played in the Russia investigation. Here on Hill TV, there's so much to talk about in the U.S.-Russia relationship, I, I can't wait to jump right in. So at some point, one of your lawyers, I think, came to work in a capacity with Christopher Steele. I wonder if you could just describe yourself, what that relationship was like, whether you ever dealt with him directly or whether it was just a research project with, uh, with your, one of your law firms. It was a research project to support one of the cases against me in London. But my understanding is that the lawyers trust him for some reason, and he was for quite time on retainer. And as you know, I know that you, you know, find the story. They approach me and to introduce me to some people in justice, and we have, you know, one conversation. Right. Yeah, that's in fact was going to be my next question. So in 2015, the documents indicate that a, a justice official named Bruce Orr and others in our DOJ were, were looking to facilitate a conversation that was part of a program apparently to, to uh, uh, recruit Russian businessmen to assist the United States in some way. Could you talk a little bit about that approach and what happened? And was Mr. Orr involved in that approach directly to you? It's presented now like recruiting. You understand right. that. Right. So that's say how... my words were actively fishing to the way to clear up, you know, the situation, try to understand what uh, what actually in this hidden file, which, uh, as you mentioned, uh, was released just recently after I filed um, complaint against my designation. And uh, they said that there is a person who definitely saw your file, who could uh, ask you a question, you can, you know, give an answers and everything would be clear. There was a pretext, you understand. Right. Right. And that was in 2015, correct? Yeah, I think it was 2015. And then we met, and, you know, it's uh, one of the, you know, a regular issue, you know, which happened when I met uh, supposedly know my problem people from U.S. bureaucracy. They actually never talk, you know, talk about problem. They start talking about anything else. I ask you, do you have anything, you know, give me names, cases, whatever, right. you know, whatever which you then, you know, can see on the, on the, on the press, you know, which usually funded, you know, from the Russian um, competitors. You know, no, there is no, just, you know, general discussion on, and how to say, uh, I usually, Try to suggest them why you wouldn't go and ask same question your Russian counterpart. Because for me, whatever they raise, like cybercrime, like right. uh, illegal activity, money laundry, why do you need to talk with me? Yes, I have a lot of, uh, let's say, people who deal with the security in the companies, and of course, they, they, you know, people who are professional and we can find out a lot of things. But why you wouldn't go and establish a normal you know, relation between two law enforcement, I just say, uh, authorities and uh, not try to make, uh, you know, progress which will be legal, you can use it. Why you need this, uh, you know, talk for Interesting. Say, waste of time, in my now view. Uh, the documents indicate both in the time you helped the FBI privately uh, in the search for Levinson and in the period where they tried to talk to you uh, in 2015 through Christopher Steele and, and Bruce Orr, that at various times the United States government let you into the country, either the CIA or the FBI let you in without objection. What does that say about the nature of the concerns they had about you if they would let you in on, on episodic occasions? But, John, as I said, they have no concern. We have right. nothing to discuss. I was prepared since end of nineties, you know, to answer any question. Right. And I, a few times I, I answered, you know, and, uh, and for me, you know, case was cleared. But then, 
again, I don't, I don't want to explain you how your State Department works through all these years <laughs> and uh, how this Russian hands or now Eurasian hands actually create. And if right. you look at reality, is it now safer than it was in the beginning of the 90s for both of us, you know, for years, for Russia, for US people, for Russian people? No, I mean, we in a kind of deadlock, which uh, un, you know, was unsinkable in a time when uh, Russia and Perestroika and start new you know, life in you know, a market economy and attempt to, to build a uh, you know, successful country. Right. Fast forwarding to the September 2016 period, I've written that the FBI agents um, showed up at your house unexpectedly on one of your trips to New York in September 2016. Could you talk a little bit about what happened there and their questions about Paul Manafort and Russia collusion and what you might have told them to set them straight? Uh, I just want to, you know, talk a little bit broadly, just to find out. Uh, I, I as, as as you said, I received the file and I found that one of the guilt uh, that they have a diplomatic passport. Mm -hmm. And uh, why I would have diplomatic pass? Because State Department people in decade, you know, you know, through through the embassy in, in, in Russia, that they will only agree to put visa for me travel in UN. You know, there was, a, you know, every year there is September UN convention and right. climate, which I'm very interested in. And I'm, how to say, so, you know, sorry that uh, we stop any, you know, climate talk. You know, there is no Paris deal, there is nothing. But, okay, it's a reality. And, it, and literally for... The last you know, four or five years, it was the only event in the US which I which I visit. And they insist that they will never put in my Russian ordinary passport and I should get you know, diplomatic passport. And later they put as it as one of my scenes, as one of my guilds. This is hypocrisy you can you know ever you know meet. But uh, those time when, when I came and arrived very late and uh, in the morning I was sleeping and the uh, lady who helps in the house, you know, she called me and said there is uh, three of your friends three or four I think three and I was very surprised and I came down and I, and I saw these people who you know knocks the door tells her that they are my friends and they you know have a meeting with them. and those friends uh, turned out to be FBI agents maybe one or two that you recognize from prior contacts correct I saw one before yeah uh, but all three identified themselves as working for the FBI. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And could you tell a little bit about what they were asking about and the theory that they were presenting to you and asking you to comment on? No, they asked me, you know, how they could prove that Manafort can work, you know, for the Russian state. And uh, did you have a pretty strong assessment of that theory? I told you straightforward. You know, look, I am not a friend with him. As apparently no, because I start a court case, I think, right, uh, six or nine months before, and That's right. my lawyers, you know, couldn't find him for almost, uh, you know, eighteen months, and uh, only when we, you know, start a court case, you know, his lawyers indicated, you know, willingness to talk with my lawyers, and I told them that uh, it's I'm a wrong guy, but since I'm Russian. No, I would be very surprised that anyone from Russia would try to approach him for any reason, yeah, wouldn't come and ask me, you know, my opinion. And I told them straightforward, I just don't believe that he, you know, would represent, you know, any Russian interest. And knowing what he's doing on Ukraine for the last, uh, what, seven or eight years, you know, I, I told them that, look, you know, he's working there. He consult all their political elite. You know, they, they're happy with them. And why on earth, you know, he would do something with Russia? And um, uh, did they seem uh, satisfied with your answer? Did they follow up? Did they have any other questions for you that day? Or was that their primary mission that day? No, no, they were not satisfied. But uh, they keep asking for me to consider and then uh, I just you know, laugh and said, and it was a terrible time, if you uh, remember, uh, in U.S. election, 
And uh, I said, right. are you really believe that he can win? I mean, you're acting president now. And they were laughing. We have a, you know, like, boys talk on what they care, what they don't care, who will win. But I was lately, of course, you know, kind of rethinking what was, what may be their reason, but their approach was try to rethink and to, if it's anything you can find out, please come back. Yeah, and you understand you. it was invitation to, you know, to help. But as I said, I, I told them from the beginning, I don't believe, I don't believe it's if someone who would approach him knowing that he will, you know, he had some relations with me, you know, back 10 years, you know, he would, you know, ask my advice. It's never happened and I just can't see that the guy working in the last eight years in Ukraine would ever, you know, come in and become Russian as he was named Russian source or something. Right. Well, as history has turned out, that your answer turned out to be accurate because the Mueller probe found that there was no connection between Manafort and Russia uh, or any collusion case at all. Tomorrow, Oleg Deripaska talks about his involvement in the search for former CIA agent Bob Levinson, who was abducted in Iran. But next, we're going to break down the electability myth, specifically how that applies to white men. Our next guest is going to set the record straight and get into the weeds on that subject as Rising continues.